Everybody, we're looking at we're gonna hop into Friend Sim. Last thing we did was Volume 7 of Business, Flagrantly Illegal. Ever since you were a kid back on Earth, you have always held the deep, close wish to one day travel the world. You wanted to see new places, experience exciting new tastes and altitudes and temperatures, maybe go scuba diving. You never imagined you would actually get the chance. That kind of cool stuff didn't happen to someone like you. Well, you're finally getting your wish. It's just a totally different world. Funny how life turns out. When you get back to Earth, well... You don't want to think about that. Who knows if it will ever even happen. You have really chilled out recently. Found your own place in the universe. Drifting from friend to friend, adventure to adventure. It's the only way to live. That's depressing. Okay, so, Kanil Okuma. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna go for the big girl. Right now, your travels have brought you to what appears to be a normal road in an innocuous part of town. Not particularly upscale, but not exactly a rat trap either. Just pretty average. Oh, a row, a row of those spiky purple bushes line the side of the road, and behind one of them stands a large, fierce troll who is glancing fervently up and down the street. Okay, that's less average. Hey, are you her? Huh? I mean, are you her? Are you who I'm waiting for here? Hmm, well, your first instinct is definitely to tell her that, yes, you of course are who she's waiting for, provided she's been waiting for a new friend. But honestly, you aren't sure your shtick is going to work on this girl. Of course you're not. What was I thinking? Ah. Ah. This is so infuriating. She's so late. I'm so bored. Do you think she's coming soon? I don't know what voice to give her. Oh well, she got that one. You don't know who she is, but you suggest that she might be more comfortable waiting somewhere that isn't a spiky purple shrub. Don't be stupid. My clients value discretion. I have to lay low. The shrub hardly manages to cover her, and standing behind it, and shouting is definitely not making her less conspicuous. Neither is asking random passerbys whether they are her client. Not that you can talk, accosting people left and right, and asking them to be your friend is kind of your whole deal. Ugh. If you aren't country lady 453... Is that... That's... That's Lady and... Or not Lady, but it's... Skyla. That's the name. Then who is? Country Lady 453. Hmm, that almost sounds like... Yep, there she is. It's Skyla and Lady. Sorry I'm late. I couldn't... What in tarnation? You... You'd know that genteel charm anywhere. Well, my stars. I definitely wasn't expecting to see you around here. What a masterful coincidence. You are incredibly glad to see Skyla and Lady too, and all unkidnapped and everything. You give Skyla a hug, which she enthusiastically returns. She nearly picks you up off of your feet. I love Skyla so much, please pick me up. <laughs> Lady shows her nose. Lady shoves her nose against your neck and gives you a few sloppy licks. Who the heck are you? I have business at this bush. Maybe find your own. Sorry, but I'm the business your bush has been looking for. Wait. What? Your country lady? The very same. 
Name's Skyla Korga. Pleasure to meet ya. Arg. I didn't think you'd be a bronze. I've gotten that before, honestly. Also, by the by, this concerns them too. She puts her hands on your shoulder. It does? Her voice is changing dramatically. It does? Sure enough. They were there when it happened. They even helped me fight off them varmints who tried to take my Lucis. Right, yeah, you said something about that in your message. But I don't get it. What do you want me to do? Right, well, the bandits didn't get lady. But other kids haven't been so lucky. Lowbloods have been hit especially hard. I want you to find the bandit base of operations, and I want you to take them out. Permanently and painfully. Kanil's mouth moves silently, like she is trying to reason through steps of Skyla's conversation. Then she catches up, and a slow grin spreads over her face. Yeah. Yeah, I like it painful. And permanent. But wait. You want me to get revenge for someone else's Lucis. Why? Well, a few of us got together and decided to do something about it ourselves. Since there's no hope for the heiress or the drones doing anything to stop the bandits. And they all elected me as spokes troll, seeing as how I'm the oldest and least easily shook. Okay, sure. I guess the why isn't important. How much you got? How much are you willing to throw down? I doubt any lowbloods could afford my fees. Let alone a bunch of country rusties. Lady starts to growl, and Skyla puts a pacifying hand on her head. Oh, it's a pap. Everything's fine, lady. We expected this, didn't we? We were hoping you'd be willing to do it out of the goodness of your blood pusher. Connell laughs so hard that she spits. Skyla winces. <laughs> you got a pan disorder? If you think I'd take any charity cases, I don't work pretty smiles. Keep your compliments to yourself, Missy. I wasn't... Ugh. I didn't mean to say that out loud. Why don't you just go find the bandits yourself? You know full well I don't have the means. But you do. It'd be a walk in the recreation field for you. If you weren't so nasty and selfish. Or maybe you're scared. Ugh. You... I'll show you scared. Oh hell, they look like they're about to throw down. You gotta do something to defuse this situation. Tell them no people. Ask Connolly if she works on spec. I don't know what that is. Ugh, what? I don't work on spec. I'm only licensed on Alternia. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have a license. You explained to Kanil that working on spec means doing some work for free in hopes that you are going to be paid later. You say it's unlikely that the bandits only go after Lucy. That would be totally ridiculous when there's so many other things in the world to steal. Like money. They probably have just heaps of money in their hideout, and if, it, if she breaks in, she can have it all. Skyla doesn't want it, she just wants to have to save the Lucy. You were so dang convincing that you almost convinced yourself. I'm not so sure. Sounds like you might be trying to fuck me over. You let out a scandalized gasp to convey that just that just what an untoward accusation that was. You are shocked. Shocked. Ugh. Fine. Anything to get away from this stupid bush. 
She kicks the prickly purple shrub so hard it uproots and sails across the street to land on the hood of someone's car. But you, you're coming with me. I'm going to hold you to that. And if there's no money, then I'll hold you tighter. And squeeze. Until your weirdly colored eyes pops out. Okay, if you were just going to squeeze me, I would have been fine, but I like my eyes inside of my head. Yikes, you believe it too. <laughs> she could definitely do that. But there's your chance. You've got tons of success stories proving that forced exposure is really the best way to get people to like you. Sounds just peachy. When do we leave? Kaniel kicks at another shrub. She seems to have an anger management problem. Well, you guess she is managing it. She's taking it out on the shrubbery instead of you or Skyla. We aren't doing anything. You aren't coming. Lady starts to growl again and Skyla looks like she wants to join in. Excuse me? Kaniel gets up in her face, moving way faster than anyone her size seems like she should be able to. You aren't coming. You'll just get in my way. You're distracting. Skyla's mouth twitches just the tiniest bit. That is not what I meant. <sighs> you keep tricking me. Just, I just meant that you'll probably s stop to save some bark beast wrigglers and get us all cold. Skyla crosses her arms and tosses her hair. Fine. I'm counting on you two. You've figured that the information gathering stage of the operation is next. You've seen heist movies. You know how this shit works. But Kunio just shouts at someone on her palm husk for a while, then punches some coordinates into a car that you're pretty sure isn't hers. It takes you to the outskirts of the city, past the long stretches of cracked concrete and urban sprawl. Not exactly the place you'd expect to find bandits who steal farm animals. You point this out to Kanio. She tells you to shut up. So you do. You leave the car and walk the last few blocks. The bandits operation is honestly not super impressive. It's a long industrial structure that looks more like a manufacturing plant than a den of thieves. Besides it is something much more impressive, a sleek black spacecraft. Not like yours, this is the Mercedes-Benz to your banged up sh Chevy Malibu. Even before you crash landed it, that thing was a hunk of junk. That's probably why it crash landed. Oh, holy shit. Is that... Is that an adult? What, the ship? No, dingus. You follow her frenzied gaze and... Oh, right. The troll besides the ship is taller than anyone else you've seen here. Her skin is darker gray, her claws incredibly long. If everyone you've met so far has been a kid, wow, they all deal with stuff that even adults on your planet don't. Routine death, dismemberment, and like, four different relationship dynamics. Is there really no mature trolls here? Then where are they? Wait, hold up. You're saying where you're from you live with adults? Um, yeah. You all live on the same planet. Sure do. Huh. Well. Maybe you're tougher than you look. Adults are terrifying. Come on, let's get closer. You and Conil sidle up close enough to the trolls to overhear them haggling over stolen goods. But so far, the conversation is too general to tell if they mean the Lusai. Damn, they must have globes of steel. Talking back to an adult. I mean, I am great at rushing in without giving any thought. But I am not a total moron. The two trolls appear to come to an agreement. They shake hands and head back into the warehouse together. 
So what do you think? What should we do? Huh? You? Corneal is the expert here. Yeah, no shit. For punching. I'm also good at slashing. But Adazja always does the thinking. And the planning. He's the one with the eye beams and the big think pan. Don't tell him I said that. Please. You assure her you couldn't tell it as, as as Daja, I think, anything at all because you don't know who he is. Oh, right. Daja is a frustrating bulgeler loser. You suck so bad. Also, he's my mate's Brit, and we have been together for sweeps. He's supposed to be here. But he's off busy doing some bullshit. So I need you to be the pans of the operation, okay? Please, do this for me. Oh dear. Um, search the spaceship. Here's your chance to prove you are totally capable of making non-disastrous choices. You reason it would probably be best to check out the space cruiser while it's empty, since who knows how many people will be waiting for you in the warehouse. Yeah, that works for me. You suspect that Keneal would have agreed to anything you suggested just as long as she didn't have to make the decision herself. What a mood. Same. As the kids say these days, <laughs> big worm. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's big mood. There are so many tough decisions in your life recently. Agreed. You're worried that the spaceship will be locked and your great plan is going to be over before it begins, but the door glides open easily and silently. Corneille leads the way, and you let her. You don't know what wild security measures a troll ship has, but you do know you don't want to find out. The inside is normal enough. A pilot's and co-pilot's seat, a central panel, covered in more of the squiggly Alternian language, and a blank of and a bank of screaming of sleeping screens. Other than that, it is remarkably bare of any homey touches, not like the spaceship which, in your humble opinion, was very nicely decorated. You've got some pretty dope posters on your wall. More to the point, there is absolutely nothing of value here. Conniel can also tell. Ugh. There's no point to being here. It's just a cruiser. All the good stuff is definitely going to be inside the warehouse. Okay, fair. You have no idea what you're doing, and you are sick of pretending that you do. You wish you would just take a breather, honestly. The strange compulsive desire for more friendship is still there. But you are pretty exhausted. Let's just... Fuck. Oh, well, that's kind of forward, Conniel. You aren't even in the friendship stage yet. Oh, calm down, you gigantic tool. I mean... Oh, fuck. That's an adult troll, and we are definitely going to die. That's why I said the fuck word. The fuck word? <laughs> why does... The fuck words sound like a book. <laughs> oh. Oh. Fuck, that was a big troll. Corneal is pretty big. She's the biggest troll you've met so far. If someone fed you truth serum and put a gun to your head, you might even describe her as thick. <laughs> thick with two C's. This troll is fucking terrifying. And she looks pissed. Or maybe that's just how her face always looks. There are teeth. Lots of teeth. Who told you two you could be in here? I didn't order any ugly wrigglers. Who are you calling ugly? Corneal immediately snaps a clawed gauntlet over her mouth, apparently remembering who she is shouting at. The adult troll growls, and you don't mean she sounds angry. It's not a husky, sexy metaphor. She really fucking growls. A deep, guttural animal noise. Staring into a pair of merciless cobalt eyes, you experience a pulse of crystalline fear. Blank 
and cold. You are pretty much constantly braced for death, but that doesn't mean you're looking forward to it. Instead of springing forward and rending you to pieces, the adult just stares at you. Damn. Adult monster troll. Take a picture. It'll last longer. The last thing you remember is those blazing eyes. Then even that fades and you slip away. When you thrash back into consciousness, Conil is right on top of you, pinning you to the warm, thrumming metal of the spaceship wall. She doesn't look angry, or scared, or anything. Her snarling, expressive face is utterly blank. You say her name a couple of times, but she doesn't twitch. She just squeezes down harder, grinding the bones of your wrists together. Someone is swearing. Oh fuck. You strain to see around Cunniel's head. The adult troll is seated at the pilot's seat, and the console is lit up. You realize what the thrumming in the walls means. The ship is moving. You see the sickly green-gray of the Alternian sky, and your stomach does a disorienting leap of mingled elation and dread. You can't believe you're actually going to space, and finally heading somewhere besides this fucking hellhole of a planet. Of course, that's how you felt when you were first leaving Earth, and you have no idea where this troll is bringing you, and your new prospective friend is just sitting there like she's hypnotized. She is. She only, re she only reacts when you struggle and then only to slam you back against the wall. You just randomly fell asleep, didn't you? How the heck did that happen? The adult starts talking again, but she isn't talking to you. No, I'm on my way. No more delay, as I promise. The Lucy shipment is on schedule. No, don't worry. Everything is... Sirens scream, and screens flash. The ship bucks wildly like a sailboat hit by a wave. The adult troll's fingers fly over the console. No. What the hell? I don't know. It's like I've lost all control of the damn thing. Fuck. Cornel's grip on you loosens. She pulls away and shakes her head back and forth, shaggy hair flopping onto her eyes. What? The hell. Where are we? She sounds small and lost. The adult troll doesn't turn around. She's too busy yelling at a mayday into her calm and trying to wrest back control of her ship. I think it's supposed to be wrestle back control of her ship. The whole thing shudders again and yours and Conil's heads bonk together. Ow. The ship bucks again. It feels less like engine failure and more like a gigantic baby is shaking it like a rattle. And you're scared. Sure, but you're also awash in the sudden unexpected flare of understanding and competency. Competence. Competency. Because this isn't the first time this has happened to you. This is exactly how you crash landed on, Al on Alternia in the first place. You were just passing by minding your own damn spaceship business when your ship decided it wanted nothing better than to just snap its reins, toss its wild head, and head straight for the unfamiliar planet below you. You push yourself to your feet, trying to tame your nausea as the ship, ro ship rolls. You grab Conil's hand and pull her across the compartment to a glowing green sigil on the wall. You don't know much, but you know about absconding when everything starts falling to shit. Hey, what are you- Ugh, let go of me! Absolutely not. If you do that, you will not be able to be friends with her because she'll be dead. With the strength born of desperation, you pull her into the escape pod with you. Ugh! We won't fit! You will. You do. But it's uncomfortable as hell. Creating your neck at a very uncomfortable angle, you manage to reach around Conil and press the big red button on the wall. 
An alarm sounds, and you hear the adults say, What the? Before the door slams shut, and the escape pod rockets out into space. You shudder back down toward Alternia, Conniel's weight crushing your delicate ribcage. Poor ribcage. You're surprised it hasn't sued you for damages yet. <laughs> well, we have a, a, a lawsecutioner, or whatever they're called. Well, that sure was a shit show. Hardships bring people together, don't they? That's definitely a thing. Unfortunately, you judge from Conil's swearing and muttering death threats that this is not one of those times. Game over. Uh, follow the pirate into the warehouse. You decide to follow them into the warehouse. That way, you at least know you won't be trapped in the confines of space if anyone comes back to check on the ship. You get ready to do some James Bond-ass shit, ducking behind corners and saying, Cover me! Maybe executing, executing some sick rolls down the hallway. You can't really do any gymnastics even when you aren't healing from broken ribs, but fantasy James Bond you sure can be. Peniel doesn't bother with any of that. She just stomps down the hallway toward the first door. Damn, she really hasn't been joking when she said that she was more into the straightforward approach. You pick up speed to try and get to the door before she does just to prevent her from charging in there and getting you both caught immediately. Good thing, too, through the window and the door you see what looks like some kind of break room. A couple of trolls are messing around on their palm husks. And if you are sitting at a table and playing some kind of game that involves cards and dice and little colorful shells. Oh come on, there's not even that many. We can take them. Ugh. I forgot you weren't my partner. You're just dead weight. No real argument there. Polyfoot told you that most pros work together for a reason. It's much harder on your own. You wonder if Conil would have been so hot to take the job if it hadn't been for Skyla's, uh, vibes. Yeah, that's the word. Vibes. They were vibing. You have to do this. You have to rally. Conil is already losing faith in you. Or maybe she has no faith in you in the first place. Whatever. You choose a different door at random and go down it. Assuring Conil that you definitely know what the fuck you are doing. What? Ugh! Where are you going? You've been down this road before with Damien. Demon. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, Demon. With Demon and your meat quest through the sewers. This is probably slightly higher stakes, but the same basic principle applies. Fake it till you make it. Conniel gets annoyed much faster than your other friend. If her sub-vocalizations are anything to go by, damn, you really need to step up your game. You think back on all of the heist infiltration movies you've seen. Hmm, maybe you can find a locker room or a troll laundry room and find one of those SWAT sash hazmat suits. Yeah, that would be the best plan, just to put on disguise and wander around like a sneaky fuck and oh my god damn it. You are so busy focusing on your brilliant plan that you open the door without thinking and find yourself looking at trolls playing the card game. Somehow, in your random quest through the warehouse, you manage to double back on yourself and come out on the other side of the break room. Classic. This is classic to you. You're almost charmed by yourself. Almost, if it weren't for the fact you were probably about to die. There's a frozen moment when all the bandits just stare at you and Conil, perhaps taking in the truly staggering idiot level that you have achieved. Thank fuck. We should have just done this from the beginning. You've gotten into quite a few fights since arriving on this planet. Well, mostly you've just stood around while other people fought. 
the point is, Conil is she is brutal. She takes out almost the same number of bandits that you, Skyla, and Lady did in a quarter of the time. Yeah. Oh, they have red blood. Multicolored blood flies. And god, you know these are bad guys. They've been stealing Lucy and selling them, which sucks. But right now, they're kind of just a bunch of kids getting massacred. You don't feel great about it? In fact, uh, you think you might need to sit down for a little bit. They have teal! Your back hits the wall and you slide down the dirty floor. You are clammy all over. Heh, <laughs> pathetic. Conil pulls her gauntlet out of the final troll's neck with a spray of yellow blood and a squelch that makes your stomach roll. She notice you, notices you on the ground. What are you? Ugh. Are you serious? Come on. You try to tell her that she volunteered you for this mission herself, but you can't slow your breathing enough to get words out. You aren't sure why now is the time you finally freak out. Maybe it's the close quarters, or maybe you've been Alternia you've been on Alternia long enough for this multicolored mess to finally start registering as blood. Maybe you've reached your horror saturation point. Whatever. If you've learned anything from this experience, it's that the why of things doesn't actually matter. Conil looms over you, raising a gauntlet. She's going to kill you. At least if you're dead, you can't puke on yourself. But instead of brutal stabbing, you feel a steady pressure on the back of your neck. Conil pushes down your head until it's between your knees. Take slower breaths, idiot. You follow her instructions, too lightheaded to dwell on the absurdity of being coached through a panic attack by a girl who just murdered like ten dudes. She's surprisingly good at this. Heh. <laughs> Daja freaks out this his first Daja freaked out his first tough fight too. Wasn't even bloody. The little regular passed out. <laughs> I guess some blood casts really are better built for violence. She sits down beside you and pats you on the back. You kind of wish she'd taken the bloody gauntlets off first, but you appreciated the gesture. You are having a hard time reconciling with Conil, with the one who had snarled at Skyla for being too nice. Wait, you are finding you are having a hard time reconciling this Conil with the one who snarled at Skyla for being too nice. I'm multi I am multifaceted. Also, fuck her. Which reminds me. She pulls her phone out of her pocket, smearing a little olive blood across the screen. Korga, I got your bandits. She talks a lot louder on the phone than she does in real life. Yeah, no shit. Of course I work fast. Especially when I don't have anyone to slow me down with a bunch of tactics and plans. Ugh. Save for- save it for your kiss missus. She hangs up and glares at the phone. You tell her she really seems to hate Skyla. Conniel's face goes a fierce shade of green. Don't be stupid. I barely know her. You don't press the issue. You also don't point out the kind of obvious point that these probably aren't the only trolls in the facility, that there are who have been haggling the adult isn't here, for instance. But Conil forgetting about them means less murder. You are all about that. There's no way the bandits are continuing their work after this. Conil also seems to have forgotten about the fact that she came in here looking to be paid and... Nope, she's looting the bodies. Great. It's a lot messier and takes way longer in real life than it does in video games. Of course it does. In the end, she ends up with five palm husks, a laptop, some jewelry, and some little squares of plastic you think might be sci-fi credit cards? Eh, whatever. There's barely anything here. But that fight made it pretty worth it. Well, you're glad it was good for somebody, at least. You are 
just trying not to think about it and maybe get outside as fast as possible. Whatever Conil, whatever Con Conil wants to do with your outstanding debit at this point, well, you can square up out there. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'm not actually going to squeeze you. It would be too easy. Like squishing a march bug. A march bug? The only thing coming to mind is a ladybug. Fuck yes, saved by being pitiful. I doubt you have any money anyway. I mean, you're wearing an abolition robe. True. Connell helps you to your feet. You kind of want to ask if you're friends now, even though the only bonding activity you've done together is combined murder and comforting, with her both doing those things and you standing there like a dumbass. But you really made a friend with worse people for worse reasons. Oh. Here. Why don't you take one of these? She hands you one of the palm husks. Thankfully, it only has a little bit of blood on it. Actually, it might be mustard. Like the actual condiment. But she's giving you a phone? Why? You don't have one, right? I mean, you don't even have any pants. We don't have pants? <laughs> this way, we can keep in touch. And you can tell me if you have any more jobs with an excellent violence level. Like this one. Here, let's exchange info. Palm husks are really useful. You can use them to call people and everything. Are we gonna get a little thing in the corner that we can click? You aren't sure if she's making a joke. Possibly she just thinks you're an idiot. That's okay, you can deal with that. Because not only did you make a friend today, you got a gift today. Holy shit, you killed it! <laughs> Write my number. <laughs> I hope that's just mustard. And not mustard blood. You mentioned that you are important, a real mover and shaker in the alternating economy. You have a bunch of amazing local friends. Some of them are rich, or have giant internet followings, or are just very, very enthusiastic about meat. The point is, you know people. Wow, that's really generous of you. Offering to leverage your relationships for my sake. I knew I didn't make a mistake trusting you. Well, that's a different story, I guess. Why don't you call up your fancy friends? Oh, fuck. You don't have a phone. Okay, so that's where the phone part came from. Also, I wasn't wearing my bathrobe in the My abolition robe. Anyways, that was it. Hope y'all liked it. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to see more that I've done. I have... Uh, a playlist in the description. I also play a bunch of other games and I'm planning more stuff for the future. And keep gaming.